It really is Miss Iceland up against Miss Munich Beer Festival and Miss I've Had All the Pies. And the Astra isn't just a pretty face either. All these cars have turbocharged two-litre engines. They're all the same size and they all weigh about the same as well. But though all the animals are equal, the Vauxhall is more equal than the others. And that's because its engine churns out 240 brake horsepower. That is 20 more than the Renault. It's 40 more than the Golf. As a result, it'll hit 60 in six seconds. And unlike the others, it'll sail way past 150. Makes a good noise as well. So it's the best looking, the fastest, and get this, it's also the cheapest. Not just slightly either, this powerhouse, this road rocket, is a thousand pounds less than the Golf and the Renault. A thousand pounds! There are a few drawbacks, of course. Because of the sloping rear end, our chest of drawers wouldn't fit in the boot. And the stereo navigation trip computer thing is completely unfathomable. And then there's the VXR's really big problem. Putting this much power in a front-wheel drive car has a name. It's called the Chaos Theory. You're asking the front wheels to deal with the steering and 240 rampaging stallions. And you know what? They can't. So, if a butterfly flaps its wings in China, you're going into a tree. <laughs> it's just the wheels all over the place. Driving this car is a bit like getting a piggyback off Richard Hammond after he's had a couple of pints of Stella. You don't know what he's going to do next or where he's going. I've got torque steer when I accelerate. I've got understeer when I turn into a bend. And if I lift off, I've got oversteer. Oh, and in case you don't know what torque steer is, let me just show you, OK? Let me just pull up here into first. Hands off the wheel, OK? Just watch the steering wheel here as I accelerate. Turbo comes in and we turn left. And again, left. That is torque steering the car. And it's good if you want to go left. If you see one of these cars burning rubber and slewing round the estate where you live, don't call the police. See, it won't be a yobbo. It'll be your next-door neighbour just trying to drive to work. There are many options available for this car, but there's only one it really needs. A straitjacket. There we go. Anyway, listen. See this? Uh, yes, it's a Ferrari 308. Ferrari 308. We used to dream about this, yeah? I did actually have a poster of one of these on my bedroom wall. Absolutely. Yes. Let me tell you something interesting. The engine in that Vauxhall produces exactly the same brake horsepower as the V8 in the back of this. That puts it into perspective how powerful that is. That is actually, if someone had come up to me when I was 18 and said, when you're growing up, you'll be able to buy a Vauxhall with the same power <laughs> as your pin-up supercar. Startling. Anyhow, we've now got to find out how fast the Vauxhall goes round our track. So we must hand it over, of course, to the tame racing driver. Some say that his voice can only be heard by cats and that he has two sets of knees. <laughs> All we know is he's called the Stig. <laughs> Away he goes, bouncing off the limiter with a puff of smoke. All going well so far, but that's because he's going in a straight line. Here comes the first corner, though. This is where it's going to get interesting. Turns in hard, tyres squealing in pain. He's not crashed yet. The stick shaking his head there. Not even the sound of camel can soothe him. Driving under braking very hard into Chicago. Very neat so far through there, but... What's it going to be like on the way out? Oh, a little bit me! 
Messi on the grass. Okay, he's trying to oversteer on the way into Hammerhead. Now if we get rid Look at that understeer! It's understeering like a shopping trolley full of logs. This car is completely bonkers, but Stig bravely keeping his foot down through the follow-through. And looking quick through the tyres, very quick. There are two corners left now. Here he comes, look at him sawing away at the wheel. No curb left unclipped on the grass again. Sweaty pulls now, he's going across the line. Very good driving from Stig there, because it was potty. I have the time, and it is one minute and 33 seconds dead, which is in there. Now, as you'd expect, that is 2.1 seconds faster than the Golf GTI, OK? But it's half a second slower than the Renault. Really? Yeah, unbelievable. It just shows how much of this engine's power is being wasted. I mean, you could give it a million horsepower if the chassis can't put it on the road. Pointless. Sort of exciting, though, isn't it? Come on. It's exciting in the same way that being shot at is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> OK, what about the uh, Renault? Renault's tempting. No question about that. It's a very good car. But you know what? I'd still have the Volkswagen. I would, because it does what a hot hatchback is supposed to do. It does everything. And don't think it's boring. Who would like to see what happened when the Stig tried to get it round our track? Yes? yes. Play the tape. Here he comes. Look, it's the final corner. Clips the curb. Thinks he's going to understeer off. Uses the handbrake and... Oh, no! We nearly killed him. He nearly died. Rolled it over. So you see, it is a great car. Brilliant.